afternoon. A lady this morning said I gave you so much it gave her a headache. <coughs> so I've got to be Tylenol 101 <laughs> this afternoon. So K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. I, he said to himself. All right, let's see what we can do. Acts chapter 9. All that I tried to show you this morning, and I'm sorry if it got all jumbled up. You can blame it on me. Trying to show you that this was an intense time of God showing Peter through many, many things the difference between holiness as he understood it, Peter, and holiness as Christ provided it in Christianity. Simply put, Peter had two perceptions. I'm not going to go into all that I said this morning, just two things. Acts 10, 34, Peter said, now I perceive. He came to know that God is no respecter of persons. That was a powerful revelation. You need to mark that in your Bible or in your mind or in your notebook, whatever you want to do. Say, this is where Peter put an X on the page and said, now I am different than I was before this. And then in Acts chapter 12 and verse number 11, Peter has a second perception. Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So that's two things that the Holy Ghost showed him that released Christianity and helped Peter to understand how that he was to walk before God, not as a citizen of Jerusalem proper, but a citizen of heavenly Jerusalem, the Jerusalem which is of God, the Jerusalem which is above. Now, go back now to Acts chapter 9. That's all the introduction that I needed to give you. And I want you to understand that there's several things that God does to Peter as we begin with him in Acts 9.32 before he goes to Cornelius' house. The, uh, 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 the Gentile who was a, a Roman Gentile, and he begins to prepare uh, Peter's mind. And it came to pass, as Peter passed through all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwell at Lydda. As I said, that word's only mentioned four times in the whole book of Acts, and it is the same word holy in verse 31, that word saints, is the same word holy in verse 31 when it says the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and he says, uh, and there he found a certain man named Enos, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. So God in his kindness and his graciousness, he begins to ease Peter into uh, the acceptance of Cornelius. So he's going to send him to two Jewish believers. Both of them have problems and both of them show through their maladies the condition of the Jewish church under the law. Okay? Now all you got so far is Jewish believers. So I'm not talking about born again believers. I'm talking about those born again believers that tried to keep it under Moses' law. That they got to be circumcised, that they got to do this on a certain day and that on a certain day. And notice how long the man had been sick. How many years? Eight in the Bible is the number of new beginnings. How many days in the week? So the eighth day is the next week. That's the first day. That starts the new beginning. Even that is stamped with God showing Peter that this thing has a new beginning now and you've got to get with the program. But Peter had had all of his life an understanding of God through a Jewish concept. Now he has to come and understand God through Christ. And so he comes and finds Enos. He is an infirm male. The male has the seed. He cannot procreate. Israel cannot procreate. They don't have the seed. What is the seed? Galatians 3, 16. I want you to see it. I know you know it, but I want you to look at it. Show and tell. I'm going to tell you and show you too. Galatians 3, 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, last three words. Which is Christ. All right. 
If you don't have Christ, you don't have that seed. You are infirm. You cannot pass it on. This man was infirm. He was in his bed for eight years. He was delighted to be able to make his bed because he knew that meant for at least eight hours he wasn't getting back into it and he'd been in it in eight years, for eight years. So Peter tells me to do the thing that the man had never even considered doing for all that time and that is make thy bed. What a wonderful thing. Uh, it, it was like Jesus telling the woman caught in adultery, go thy way and sin no more. Yeah. Sin no more. Make thy bed. Something that he wasn't able to do, she wasn't able to do before, but now regeneration is coming to their heart. Now he has that seed which is Christ and he's able to pass on the gospel as it goes from faith to faith. Not from Jew to other Jews, but from faith to faith. That's how it's supposed to be. So he's in his bed and he's sick of the palsy for eight years. He has no acceptable works. The brother this morning quoted Ephesians 2.10. We know 8 and 9, by grace you say through faith, and that not of yourselves, is not of works lest any man should boast, not of yourselves lest any man should boast, and so forth. And then it says, for we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. There are specific ways that a Christian will act because God has as much predestinated those works and those ways, those characteristics of the Christian as he has ordained that that, believe, that, that uh, human being might be saved. So God has elected that sinner, but he's also elected how that new born again believer will act now that he is born again and come out from his sin. So this man had no ability to show that he was a, a child of God. Dear soul, listen. Baptist preachers are going and grabbing uh, rabbis and trying to get their churches, and some of them are doing it, under Jewish law and putting it back under that, saying, y'all are the ones that had the scriptures. You're the one that the prophets came by. We need to get back under you. You're going backwards, folks. You wind up with no seed. You wind up infirm. What we need to do is have the, the Jewish people come to Christ. Not come to the Baptist. Amen. Come to Christ. The sole reason I is a Baptist is because I came to Christ in a Baptist uh, setting and it hadn't hindered me from following God. Amen. If it had, I'd have been out of it. Because I'm going to follow Christ. So here this man was. He had no seed. He, he could not procreate. He could not move. He could not do any works. There was nothing that he could do to show that he was a healthy uh, child of God. But look what happened when uh, the, the sovereign command from Jesus Christ came. Verse 34, Peter said unto him, Enos, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole arise. And he rose immediately, and now listen at the fruit that comes from his new life. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Makes me think of Matthew 5, 16. I hadn't thought of that verse in 72 years. Well, in a long time. Matthew 5, 16. Listen to this. <clears throat> Let your light, it's your light. God gave it to you. you standing on the moon. Revelation chapter what? 11, 12, 12. Standing on the moon, you reflect light. You're not the sun. Christ is, the S-U-N. You reflect light. But it's your light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and what will happen. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. It, it was amazing that here was this man that the, you know, the church sisters had been real kind and compassionate to Enos' wife and said, we know you're tired. We know being a caregiver is, is hard. We know you have to feed him everything. We know you have to take everything to his bed. The church is involved with you. We'll help you feed him. We'll help you go, to, you know, take your food in there to him and all this. And, 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 and we'll give you a little spell. You go, you know, go do your Christmas shopping. We'll stay here with him. And, and, and he couldn't do anything. But now he was making his bed. He never had done that. Never had a need to do it. He's always in it. 
It's amazing to me how these nurses in hospitals can make a bed with you in it. <clears throat> uh, but anyhow, we, we, that ain't got nothing to do with our lesson. Uh, but now, he's not only making beds, he, he's helping and he's paying back all of that stuff that's been done for him and it's having an effect and Enos' light is just shining off everybody. And they're saying, man, Enos, this is great. He said, it ain't me, it's the Lord. He said, my light is shining, but that they may see your Father and glorify Him. Right. He's given all glory to God. It's Jesus Christ that made the well. Boy, it was good. Sure was lucky that Peter came down and, and, and did this for him. He said, it ain't luck. And it wasn't Peter. It was God's sovereign grace. And he began to glorify God. And the whole town turns to the Lord. That's what it said. Lydia and Sharon saw Him. How would you like to go from the graveyard where stinking Lazarus was and be invited to the supper at Mary and Martha's house and see him sitting across the table from you? Yeah. You'd spill gravy all over your tie staring at Lazarus. You'd say, my goodness, that fellow just a few days ago, I, they said take away the stone and I backed up. I mean, I wasn't going to stand close to that grave. That man was dead. He was graveyard dead. And there he is. I'm watching him. He's chewing. He's looking around. He's smiling. He's saying, thank you for what's put on his plate. And, and, and I can't get over it. And it just uh, an amazing witness that somebody was dead is now alive. Are you listening to me, Christian? Because before you got saved, you was graveyard dead. Dead in trespasses. Dead in sin. You can't get out of that. Now, the world is looking at you. You know what? I remember when we used to, uh, us gang of boys, we used to do so and so. We, 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 we used to uh, do terrible tricks on that old widow woman down there and we laugh at it. And now you down there planting pansies for her where we stomped on them. And you down there painting her fence where we used to run along there with that stick. You ever do that? Somebody have a picket fence and you get a stick. We, we would used to skate on the sidewalk. And leave marks all over that place. Didn't care. Now you back over there painting that fence. And nobody's making you do it. What happened to you? Old things have passed away. Behold, oh. all things have become yeah. new. Who did it? Jesus did it. Amen. Amen. Right. And, and so this thing is amazing that God is showing Peter, even through Peter's mouth and his own hand raising him up, Showing them that, that Judaism is dead, and if they arise, they're going to rise as Christians. So he sees an infirm man, and it pictures, it pictures uh, Israel. Now, what does Enos' lesson tell Israel? Look at Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 11. Okay, you know me. Back up. We're going to start off with Genesis 1 1. That went Ann's headache again. Okay, Hebrews 12 uh, 9. Wherefore we have fathers, what? Of our flesh. This is back when you were under Judaism. You had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather? Be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live. Now we're in, we worship in spirit and in truth, not just under the old command of the law. It's not duty anymore, it's devotion. And they verily for a few days, just 4,000 years, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But the Lord, He for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. All that lost stuff, it, it was grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, read this for Enos in verse 12. Would you read me Hebrews 12, 12, and think about Enos? Does that sound like Enos? He couldn't do that before. Now, all that you've been through, eight years of laying in the bed, that was grievous. 
But look what it's going to yield. You're going to be happy to be able to make up your bed. So lift up those hands which were hanging down. And lift up your feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet. Why? Because we're going to quit thinking about me and I and myself. And we're going to start thinking about what God can do to use me for others. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So here is Enos spoken to under the chastisement of the law and the fathers of the flesh. But now he has come and seen that God took all of that, sanctified it, blessed it, and brought it on over and, and gave them an understanding of the character of God in the law, but gave them the ability to have the character of God within them in Jesus Christ. The law tells us what God's character is like. Jesus Christ forms God's character in you. So what are you to do? First of all, get out of that bed. Those hands that, that hung down. I talked to Joyce Strickland the other night, and she said, we're fixing to go get my... Uh, my arm unbound. She's had her arm bound to her chest for several weeks because her, her shoulder came out of joint twice. And she said, I'm scared when they take it loose, it's just going to dangle. So I got to text her and or ask or call her and say, did it dangle? You know, she's scared it's just going to hang down. But he, he ain't going to hang down and no Christians is. That which dangled, that which has no power, that it's, the arm of the Lord is not shortened that it might save. Your arm, dear soul, is, is not capable of saving. God has to make your arm strong. God has to make your legs straight. God has to make your path straight so that you might be able to be used for those who don't know how to walk with God, for the lame not to be turned out of the way. That's the lesson that we learn uh, with, with Enos. That's what we, we are to learn. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. In verse number one. He that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, and another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth, for God has received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Dear soul, you see a weak man, you see an, an Enos laid on the bed, you say, he ain't of much use. Uh, he is, he's, you know, I don't even want to look at him. It just grieves my heart to see a man in that condition. Wait a minute. What kind of condition were we in before God took, took, took us under his authority and under his control, undertook to hold us up? And he said, God is able to make him stand. Do you remember what the armor does in Ephesians chapter 6? Who all is for that? How many people can wear that armor one, one individual at a time. And he said, put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, and so forth. And it said, that you may be able to stand. And it said, and having done all to stand. Enos can't stand. Israel can't stand into the law. No religion can stand under works concepts of justification. We're not justified, justified by works. We're justified by grace, and then the works will follow in the right order. Amen. It's not of works, but it is unto good works, and those are the works that God will do through you, and God will make you to be able to stand with yourself personally, girded up with that armor, which every piece represents Christ. So as we put on Christ, we get out of our infirm beds, we make it up, showing that we're not getting back in it. And, and, and Nathan said he hated that I told Christine that he was supposed to make his bed up every morning. <laughs> but, hey, you know, I'm preaching what God told me to do. You and Christine are going to have to work that out. <laughs> but, dear soul, listen. When, when, when you get saved, you, you, you want to do something for the glory of God. You can't not do it. 
It, it, it didn't say you shall try to be witnesses. It said ye are witnesses. So whatever God brings forth from you is that Christian light shining forth after you have been raised up. Now, the, the second thing is Dorcas. He now is at Joppa. He's left Jerusalem in 8-1. He's gone down uh, to Lydda and Sharon in, in 9 and in, uh, verse uh, 32 and 34. And now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, and they're going to call him down to Joppa, and that's where he's going to be when they send for him uh, to come to Cornelius' house. So Dorcas, uh, she's, she's dead, not like Enos. Enos is alive, but he can't do nothing. Dorcas is dead, but she's done a lot of stuff. And it, it says that when Peter came there, uh, in verse 39, all the widows, and I can't get by that without wondering where was their husbands. Well, you don't get to be a widow by except when your husband dies. Well, we're talking about Israel and Christianity, so the only thing that was left to praise the good works of a dead Jewish believer were widow women. No headship. Christ ain't got there yet. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Everything, every part of this thing is stamped with Christ bringing us over from Judaism to Christianity. Yeah. Peter is just saturated in it. So he gets down there and here are widow women and they are, they are weeping and, and dear soul, we sing joy to the earth. And what was the reason joy to the world? The Lord is come. But here are headless women weeping over a dead sister that has done many wonderful works, showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. She was very much into uh, charity work and helping others. She dedicated herself to it. We're not saying that Judaism was bad. This old that's where Christ came. That's where the prophets were. That, 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 that's where the unction came. That's where uh, the, the revelation of God was. Uh, but now, dear soul, it's moving from what we read you this morning in Hebrews 10, from, from that which is dead into that which is now uh, replacing it and shall be alive forevermore. The revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. So here are, here are widow women with no joy, weeping over a charitable but dead believing Jewish woman. You don't think this got to Peter? That's my point about what two things Peter perceived. Let's read it. Let's just read one of them again. And Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive God is no respecter of persons. 1034 of Acts. It's being, it's being just over, it's just overcoming one thing after another, everything revealing to this apostle by direct revelation. God's not in this thing like that anymore. The law had a shadow of things to come, but not the very image of those things. And those sacrifices can never take away sins. Now, Peter, you can't have a Jewish Jesus. You can't have Jewish Christianity. You're going to have to have, listen, God, reveal, spirit, and truth Christianity. It can go into every kind of person. Our brother read us that in Revelation 5 and verse 9, out of every people and kindred and nation, and that word Tongue means language. And it can go into every kind of person, but you can't make it an American Jesus. You can't make it a German Jesus. You, it, listen, it's just like the light of the sun coming through the palace uh, 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 windows and shining into a chandelier. It makes that chandelier sparkle. But when the light goes back out at night, it ain't any better than it was. 
and it ain't any worse than it was. The chandelier can benefit from it. The Christian, Jew, Gentile, German, Russian, Italian, American, whatever, benefits by it. But God is spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Not in time and place anymore, but in spirit and truth. That's Christianity. And anything else, you're going to have, you're going to have weeping widows crying over a dead Christianity. Isn't it amazing? It, it's, it's just amazing. She has, she has no fruitfulness. Uh, Isaiah 32, verses 7 and 8. This is Dorcas standing. And nobody's trying to take away the works that she did. Listen, David, King David of Israel, is just my glorious psalmist. I love reading his words. Uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. My Bible is primarily Jewish. But my God is primarily spirit. So he ordained that that nation bring it to me. Great. Give it to me. It's mine. And if I receive it, I don't make it American. I can't change what it is any more than they can keep what it was. It's God. Listen at, listen at Dorcas in Isaiah 32 and verse 7. The instruments also of the churl, that means a wicked person, are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the poor, the needy, speaketh right. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand, or she stand. This old Dorcas was a liberal person. She gave. I do not see for the life of me how we can talk about conservatism in America and hate the poor. Excuse me if that's just a little bit too political for you. I ain't trying to be political. I'm trying to be spiritual and help you watch out for the dangers that's in this world. I wish everybody was conservative and moral and believed in morality. But don't throw away helping the poor to do it for heaven's sake. And you know what? It didn't kill anybody to hear me read that word liberal in verse number 8. Did that unbaptist you? <laughs> I didn't ask you to go change your party down at the voting hall, did I? I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the condition of your heart. Yeah. And be careful that we don't try to Americanize that which is only spirit. Because if you try to change something that's perfect, you know what I found out? Yeah. You'll mess it up. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You listening to me? Folk, I don't care how you vote, who you love, don't love in, in the White House. It don't make a particle of difference to me. But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man of God sent to help you with spiritual things. And these things are leading us off into paths that we're going to get in trouble with. We need, to, we need to stay with God and not make our Christianity to be Democrat, Republican, or Independent. I'm like the fella said, I ain't for the donkey or the elephant, I'm for the lamb. I don't mind that a bit, you. Amen. Israel at that time had neither seed nor womb. It couldn't produce for God. Now, while we're in Isaiah, what is Dorcas? Lesson to Israel. Isaiah 50 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> Guess who's talking? <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Where is the bill of your mother's divorce whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourself. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. I didn't do it. 
I, listen, if Israel is so far from me, they don't even recognize their Messiah when, they come, when he comes. They're going to murder their Messiah even though they knew where he was going to be born, who, how he was going to be born of a virgin, when he would be born. The wise men came and showed There was so much that showed them. And he said, listen, if I don't do the works that no other man has done, don't believe that I'm the Messiah. But he did do works that no man had ever done in the history of the world. They still didn't believe it. He said, I didn't do it. You did it to yourself. All right, Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear. Sing, Dorcas, you did, but sing. Break forth into singing and cry aloud that thou didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. You figure that now. Dear soul, are you poor? Are you needy? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Dear soul, he'll bring more fruit out of you as a previously infirmed uh, uh, religionist. Get you off your bed and the whole town, two towns, will get saved because of who you are. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And, and, and here, here, here is Dorcas. Enlarge the place of thy tent. We don't need to buy a bigger house. We ain't even filling up the bread rooms we got. Well, you better hurry up and do it because God said they're on the way. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth when you denied your Messiah. Shall, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Won't be any more widows weeping over a dead Jewish a believer. What does the next sentence say in verse 5 down to the, what is it, semicolon? Got it? There ain't anybody here without a womb. There ain't anybody here without seed. There's not anybody here that can't procreate for... Read it again. For thy maker is thy husband. You think God can bring to the birth and not bring forth? God don't have no miscarriages. No, sir. Amen, sir. And he said every joint in the body of Christ supplies. Amen. It works. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath had, uh, hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou was refused saith the Lord I know what you were but that ain't what you are now for a small moment have I forgotten thee but with great mercy shall I gather thee in a little wrath I hid my face from thee but for a moment but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee saith the Lord thy redeemer that's God speaking to Dorcas, yeah. to Tabitha, you were dead. Peter, you're going to have to see that her life is in Jesus Christ. And if Peter, you can say to her, arise, and that dead body comes back to life and she opens her eyes and looks at you first, you got to understand, you doing that in my stead. One of these days, she's going to die physically and she'll open her eyes in heaven and I'll be the first man she sees. You're just standing in my place to help her get used to dying and opening her eyes so she can see her Redeemer. And it ain't Peter, it's Christ. Isn't this amazing? It, it, it's amazing. Can, can we read a couple more scriptures? Jeremiah 3 8. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. And I saw when. For all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So God had cast them off. They, they had sinned against, uh, against heaven. They had sinned against the Messiah. But now the Lord was coming back to them. 
and 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 he was welcoming welcoming them back uh, in, into his arms. I hope I this is a passage I want. Hosea chapter nine. That's not what I want. Uh, let's see. Never mind. That's not what I want. Um, did you notice as we said it this morning that God said to both of them through, P through Peter, arise. Mm -hmm. The only thing the true church in America needs today to come back to its power and to make the world step backwards and understand the glory of Jesus Christ is for God to resurrect her and put her back on her feet. That's all we need. One word. Arise. Truth is laying dead in the street in our country today. Like that letter that Brother David put on the bulletin board that, that Brother Gary read you this morning. Said we're looking for truth, can't find it anywhere. It's awful. Uh, brother, brother Mike Campbell go up there in Rome to preach. In that, is it a shelter, brother? Yes. And, and they got homeless people, addicts. drug addicts, drug addicts and mentally, depressed. mentally depressed. And he goes up there and preaches. And what's the guy's title that's in charge of all that? He's a, a general manager. General manager of that place. Beg brother Mike to please come back and preach every Saturday morning up there. Begging for it. Isn't that amazing? We have to go to the homeless, the drug addicts, and the mentally depressed to find anybody who wants to hear the gospel. I'll tell you what you do. You try to get that last toy on the shelf at Walmart and somebody grab it out of your hand and you tell them about Jesus and see how long they listen to you. Isn't that something? And you wait two seconds after the light turns green before you hit your gas and see if you don't get bumped in your bumper or somebody blow their horn at you. The love of money is the root of all evil. All evil is upon us now because we've turned to nothing but greed. And I don't understand for the life of me how that buying a toy at Walmart has anything to do with incarnation. Uh-oh. I just lost my job, didn't I? Pack it up, Diane. We're going home. But it's, it's just naturally accepted by us all, isn't it? It is. We're going to give out presents just like everybody else. But who even stops for a second and says, what are we doing? We're looking at dead Dorcas and infirm Enos, and we don't understand that this is the church in America today. You've been so good, I need to hurry up and quit. Uh, I ain't got but about an hour's worth more to go. That's okay. <laughs> Let me show you something. I'll I just finish up with this. Um, notice in verse 43 of Acts chapter 9. I was on that word arise. There's one thing I didn't tell you about that. He says to Enos, arise in 934. And in chapter 9 and verse 40, he says to Tabitha or Dorcas, arise. And yet we hear Jesus' words in John 11, 25, I am the resurrection. This old all that needs to be done is for God to put his power back with the preaching of the word and bring back the dead church in America and bring us to understand that we threw out Jesus a long time ago and that's the reason we're in the mess that we're in right now. I'm going to get to 934. Let me show you something. Revelation 11. Here's where we are. Revelation 11. In the first six verses, you have the power of the gospel through the local churches. They have power to shut heaven. And, and 
the water of the word not rain down on people when people reject the gospel then it shuts off they have power to turn the waters into blood and so forth now in verse 7 it says that there will be a time when the church has finished her testimony the testimony is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and when people come to the place where they don't want to hear it anymore God withdraws his church. You can read that in Isaiah chapter 8. Seal up the law among my disciples. Bind it up among my, my, uh, the children that the Lord hath given me. He withdraws it from the public. That's what's the matter with America today. The, the powerful gospel has been withdrawn from the public. And then when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth up out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. All right. This is not killing physically Christians. This is not killing Christians. This is killing their testimony. This is when hell gets on the top of the ground. The gospel used to be there and the nation prospered. Everybody's saying, why did that guy shoot them kids up there in Newtown uh, of uh, Connecticut? Because he's full of hell. Because he's full of the devil. He say, well, how come that didn't happen in my day and age? I talked to old Brother Johnson this morning. He said, the worst thing we had in our schools uh, was uh, chewing chewing gum in class and being in the hall without a permit. That's bad as it got. But there have been 70 school shootings since the mid-1990s in America. 70. We probably can't think of over two or three. Hell's on top of the ground. Why? Because the testimony's been withdrawn. Why? Because people won't receive it. They don't want it anymore. So God said, well, get, pull it back. All right? That's when the beast comes out of the bottom of his pit. That's who's in that, that man that shot them. If you can shoot your mother in the face while she's looking at you, you can do anything. He's full of hell. Listen. And their dead bodies, you're not going to destroy God's church. Them being without a testimony is like a dead body because that's what the church does. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Well, where is that? Where also our Lord was crucified. Where do you think it was? It's spiritual Jerusalem. What is it? It's religion without God in it. It's religion with, with, with the gospel preachers withdrawn from it. It's Revelation 9. The uh, star falls. The luminous body falls. The preaching of the gospel falls. Revelation 9, 1. And the air is filled with locusts and smoke. And it covers up whatever light there is left. We don't have any light from God anymore in our streets. And listen. And they of the people and kinsmen, kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not permit their dead bodies to be put in the grave. They even like religion. Keep it around for a little bit. And they that dwell upon the earth, that is, they're not spiritual people, they don't dwell in heavenly places, shall rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. I'm glad them old buzzards ain't around no more. You remember that fellow used to come around here preaching hellfire and brimstone, make me so mad? Now we can just openly profess that we're atheists. We don't believe in God. All right, go ahead. That's God give you enough rope, you'll hang yourself. Because listen, and after three days and a half, how long is that? That's longer than two days. How long is that? It's shorter than four days. I don't know. I ain't God. Listen, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and what happened? And great fear fell upon them which saw them, and they heard a great voice. Here is the gospel coming down from heaven again. That's where we are. The gospel is laid dead in the street. Truth is laid dead in the streets. And Americans love it because they don't want God bothering them. They want to do what consenting adults agree to do. It's just really living like a bunch of hogs. Eat, drink, and be merry. Get what you can get. You know, and we've lost the excellency of the human spirit overcome by the Holy Ghost, raised up to actually be those created in the image of God. And what you've got now is human beings who were designed to be above the angels and to be like God himself, be as the image of God himself, are now hogs and dogs 
fighting over a bone. Because when you remove the Holy Spirit from that creature that's supposed to be higher than the angels, he becomes lower than hell. There ain't nothing re worse than an old reprobate believer, professor, that, that said, used to say they, they knew God. All they was doing just going through the motion. Hebrews 6 says, impossible to renew them again. We got a reprobate nation on our hands. And if God don't help us and raise up the gospel among the homeless, drug addicts, and the mentally depressed, they say, I don't know what we're going to do. These are highways and hedges. Go out into highways. We're in a mess, folk. Peter is seeing dead Dorcas and infirm Enos, and he, and he himself, and, and again, I will finish with this. Acts 9.43 it came to pass that he tarried, how long? Many days in Joppa, listen, with one Simon, a tanner. Now, this ain't talking about somebody that goes and gives them $5 to lay on a tanning bed for an hour. Brother Ed was telling me about some folks down here in Griffin that uh, had a t they still have a tanning factory. He said, you can't get close to it. it. It's awful. It stinks. You wouldn't believe it. It's so bad. Why? You know, why didn't he go to the Holiday Inn? My soul. What's he doing staying at a house with a man with all them dead carcasses and all that smelly stuff they use to preserve those hides and make leather and so forth out of? Hebrews chapter 13. Last scripture, I promise you. How's your headache? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13. This is why God put Peter at the place where there was a tanner. Hebrews 13, 11. For the bodies of those beasts that are brought into the sanctuary... And folks, you think about it. Have you ever been near a slaughterhouse? Now that's pretty, that smells pretty rotten. You got to do something with the blood. Excuse me, the manure. You got to do something with that carcass. You got to do something with all of that, the entrails. And, and can you imagine what it was like? You say, oh, the temple, it had gold all over it. Yeah, go around back. Yeah. Do you know where they got the word hail? It's where they carried the bodies out and burned them. Whew. Listen. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, though bodies are burned without or outside the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. He was not involved in Jewish religion. He came to establish pure Christianity. I'm going to say it like that so you get the point. All right, here's the word. Peter, are you tired of smelling the stinking, rotting carcasses at the tanner's house? The next chapter says he's sent down to Cornelius. He sees an infirm male Jewish believer. He sees a dead female Jewish believer. He has had a sheet let down to him. He has had perceptions from God, direct revelations. He has seen uh, uh, Enos lay in his bed eight years. And, and here comes a new beginning on that eighth year. He has had all of this given to him. And here's the message of God to Peter down there at the Tanner's house in Hebrews 13, 13. Let us go forth, therefore, listen, unto him. Not Cornelius, but unto Christ. Yeah. You have to go to Cornelius if you go to Christ. That's the point. Let us go, let us go forth, therefore, unto Christ, outside the camp, doing what? Bearing his reproach. Bearing his reproach. But I don't want my former religious people to think ill of me. I don't care what they thought of me. I have left some real good churches and been thrown out of some real good ones too. 
Son, I tell you what, they, none of one of them died for me. And ain't none of them going to stand there and intercede for me. And ain't none of them going to tell the Father, forgive him and pray for me like Jesus. And I'm sticking with him. So I have to bear his reproach. That's fine with me. Because that's a small price that I have to pay to be able to be identified with that which don't stink in the nostrils of a holy God that ain't represented by an infirm male and a, and a dead woman and all they got is garments left over that widow women are weeping about. <laughs>